Here we have a Nintendo Switch, the OLED model right here. And it was mailed over to us because it does not charge. Let's read what the customer wrote. Device will not charge. I myself replaced the battery. I put it into a local repair shop and they replaced the battery and the charging port. Great. That's really awesome news. The customer replaced the battery himself and the repair shop replaced the charging port. Great. Let's see what's going on with the board and how the board looks like. I have not fixed a Nintendo OLED model yet, but the board does not look that much different. The chips are not located in the same location. Let's quickly go over the board. This is the first Nintendo OLED that we get in the shop here. Let's start with the battery connector. Usually we have a BQ chip right here, the charging IC, but it's not here anymore. This is the charging port. We still have the fuse here. Oh, it looks like right next to the charging port we have the BQ chip. So they switched it from here to right here. The location here is actually much better because usually when the chip is here, we have to cover this plastic piece so we do not burn it. We usually have to cover this one because this plastic connector is very close to the chip. So right now they switched the location of the chip and now it's a lot easier to work on the chip, not having to worry about burning the plastic connector. So now we know where that BQ chip is and let's take a look and see if our M92 chip is still here and it's not. Usually our M92 is right here, but the layout of the board is completely changed. We can tell that the charging port was replaced. We may have to go over this. We do not know if the pins under are making a connection or not. The customer did attempt to solder, or not the customer, the repair shop who worked on this, they attempted to solder the front pins, but we do not know if the bottom pins are making a connection or not. So we're going to have to go over this before anything else. That's our LCD connector, digitizer. Let's flip the board. Flux all over. Look at this flux. Oh, right there, that's our M92. So our M92 chip is on the back, probably next to the P13. I mean, why is the board all covered in flux? Wow. That's our P13 right here. Basically the same board, but the location of the chips are in different places and they have more things added. Before we do anything else, let's go ahead and redo the charging port. Right now, if we want to test, and Big Boss already tested this, and he said the switch is not charging, but let's go ahead and test it in case Big Boss is lying to us. He cannot hear me. Black. Display is black, so it's not charging. To be honest, I think we still have unloaded solder here. It's not coming off easy. But when tough gets going, go and get stuff.
If the Switch want to play games, we can play games too. And let's see who will win. We're already clear here, but we have a white background under. And why is the camera not in focus? Right here. And clear and clear. It just flux. Now we're gonna free apply solder onto the pads. And here we have a new USB-C connector. I'm not sure that this one will work. It looks like, oh man, it looks different. I do not have any OLED connectors. I thought this would be the same connector, but the regular Nintendo Switch connectors will not work here. Okay, let's go back to the customer's connector and we use it. And right now I'm using the Northridge Fix board holder right here. And that's our USB-C connector on the bottom. The Nintendo Switch motherboard is awkward in shape and there's no board holder that could hold it properly. So this one, we're able to adjust the pins so we can hold the board. That's reflow. Check the pins, solid, 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 and solid. Let's solder the back, and then we can test. regular switch we used to have two holes here two holes two holes one hole and one hole on the bottom but right now we have one 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 and one so we have four instead of six before we do anything else let's plug in a battery and see what we get before we had a black screen and now we have a black screen also nothing changed I mean, I had to do this so we do not spend time working on something else where the problem really is the connector. Right now we know the problem is not the connector and we have to look elsewhere. We have nine volts here and we have nine volts here at the fuse. All right, unplug the cable. So the problem is not the charging connector. Okay, let's just make this better than factory and we can move on. All right, the next thing I want to do is measure at the M92 area. And we can measure at the BQ area also. Right now we are getting 9 volts at the fuse here. So we know that voltage is reaching. We'll do more cleaning after we're done. Hopefully we can fix it. 
I mean, the customer left a lot of fox on the board, and I do not know what type of fox was used, but that's some really sticky stuff. Meter in diet mode. We are reading 1.1. We should have a 0 0.4, 0 0.5 voltage drop reading. And I'm comparing this value to the regular Nintendo Switch. I do not know if it's normal to have 1.1 voltage drop, but I believe we should have 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 here, based on my experience working on Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch Lite. 0 0.5 is good. 0 0.5 is good. 0 0.5. And it looks like we have a short here. Zero point twenty four voltage drop. We have a short here. We do not know if the BQ chip is what's causing the problem. Why don't we desolder the BQ chip and see what happens before we start injecting voltage, thermal camera and all that good stuff? Let's just remove the chip and see what happens. We still have a short here. And we do. If we measure in resistance mode, what do we get? I'm getting 18 ohms, 19 ohms. It's going up. Let's wait until the board cools down a bit because the reading can change if the cap is hot. What happens if we inject voltage and monitor the board under a thermal camera? Right now, if we inject voltage here, we're not getting any amp draw which tells us that we do not have a short. This is ground, and we have six amp draw, but here we have nothing. No amps being drawn here, so we do not have a short. Let's go to resistance mode. This is probably low resistance, and that's why it's reading a beep in diode mode. If we measure here, 75 ohms. Let's go ahead and replace the BQ chip anyway whether that's the problem or not. Right now we are doing a process of elimination. And now we're gonna see if anything changed. Let's plug the battery and give it a try, see what happens. So, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Nine volts, 1.5 amps. Wow, that's it, done. Nine volts at 1.5 amps, fixed. Wow. Okay. I'm going to give this to Big Bus to reassemble and test, and I'll be back to finish the video. We reassemble the switch, and of course, the switch is working. I mean, honestly, we did not need to reassemble the motherboard to know if that switch was going to work or not, because I was able to tell by looking at the numbers on this charging station. The number was reading 9 volts at 1.6 amps, which is perfect. If that console was stuck at 12 volts and not switching to 9 volts, then we know that we have an issue. But the fact that the numbers were correct, it was an indication that the motherboard was fixed. That's it. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And we'll do something else in the next video.